welcome, welcome, welcome to the Rip 28 Podcast. This is the Rip 28 Podcast. It's a podcast where a few friends get together and we talk about a few things. Now, some of those things you might like, some of those things you might not like, but we keep on talking about them on the Rip 28 Podcast. I am the world's greatest football dad. Slot of sports guy. <laughs> Joined by a few of my good friends. As always, we start off with the president. What's going on, El Presidente? Well played football for one week. You greatest dad. <laughs> hey, but, hey, I feel you though. I know you're proud. I know you're proud. Hey, but but a, <laughs> as always, see Nas in the building, you know. We're gonna talk about some things today. Let's go. And we got my man, your favorite coach's favorite coach. What's going on, LBZ? It's your favorite coach, favorite coach, Beasy the Goat, man. Listen here. Sly, be proud of your son, man. Be proud. Chance, don't you you jump in there and try to steal this joy to my one week. Yeah. You doing like that, man? I just had to add that in, but, football, I, said, but I said, football, I don't know you proud. Sly, you a football dad, man. I'm proud of you. Go, nephew. Now, if you can't play, now, if you can't play, I will not endorse you. I'm sorry. I, I hate to tell you. Oh, you know, well, I'm you, glad to be here, man, I, I, and hear I, that he. He's doing hey, well. Let's get it, baby. I already let him know. I, I I deny him like his name, Peter. <laughs> like he Peter. I deny him quick. <laughs> don't do him like that, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that kid is. <laughs> hey, hey, hey I, I will say this. At least as parents of people who play sports, we understand if they are trash, we're gonna, we gonna say they trash. We ain't gonna act. Like they the they they the best thing since sliced bread if they ain't that you know what I'm saying that that's what I got a problem with some of these parents. Oh, they, you ain't they, never they, lied. They, they know their kid can't play, but they 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 just blinded. They got the blinders on or something. I don't, I don't know what game they be watching, or what practice they, they watching, or what. They going to they going to uh coastal Carolina though. <laughs> <laughs> they, they 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 go in the back with their kids. You put my kid in the game. I'm like, you want us to lose fifty zero every game? No, uh, that, that's what that's what I can't figure out, man. You know, you know. I mean, just being honest, man. You know if your kid any good or not. You know, and I sit there and I hear so many parents and they talk about, oh man, that coach coach hating, man. My kids should be playing. My kids should be playing. You look over on the sideline, the kid got his helmet off, digging up his nose with his back to the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, is that who's supposed to be playing? Come on, man. I mean, I mean, granted, there, there are some coaches that are better than others, or, or we say bad coaches. But no coach is not going to play kids. That's going to help me. <laughs> they they be like, oh, you better you better than all these kids, but I'm going to just sit you on the bench. Nobody, nobody does that. The thing Stacey. I always ask them. The things I always ask him is, well, if your son or your daughter supposed to be playing, who should he or she replace? Who is he or she better than? Mm -hmm. And come to practice, before you start calling that coach and asking why your kid not playing, come sit in practice one day. And that'll be a good indicator of why your child don't play. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of times, man, you got these parents. I don't know what's worse, the parent who never played ball or the parent who played a little bit of ball in high school and well, man could they true. make it <laughs> hey hey bro I, I, I know you coaching been coaching for years sly i know you got some coaching experiences too but is it is it the dad is coming to y'all or is it just these mamas who don't know nothing it's about the mamas. <laughs> yeah well i'll be honest i've had both i've had oh, okay. both and it's worse. It's worse with the moms because they want to know what's going on a lot of times, but they just don't know. Mm -hmm. And and I think I think that's what I find out more. That's what I find more with the mamas. Sometimes daddy, especially if they play some ball, some dads can be a little bit realistic. They can be like, mm -hmm. Look, I I know what football is. I know what it expects, and I can look at my kid and I can say, hey. My kid might not have it, but moms, especially moms who never played, it's it's real tough on them to understand. Well, why my kid don't score no touchdowns? Well, ma'am, your kid is five foot two, two hundred and fifty eight pounds. He's not, <laughs> he's not a running back. He will never be a running back. He will never score touchdowns. Lots of moms who ain't never played like it's a big percentage of that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, well, it you might know, be, they it might have, be point point three percent. Well, you know, but they have they have women football leagues, women full contact football leagues. They uh they they out there. But I <laughs> I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. <laughs> but but yeah, most you know most women ha- haven't played football, so you know, and everybody gonna say, well, not me. I know the difference. I know the okay, yeah, you know the difference. You know the difference. That that's that's good. I'm talking I'm talking to the ones who who don't know the difference, who ain't played. Well, I can tell you why most kids don't play, especially football. They ain't physical. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. they, they run from contact. I mean, mm-hmm. football is full of contact. Every place somebody gonna hit you. Mm-hmm. So that's 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 the main reason that a lot of kids don't play right now. It's that contact, man. It's a physical game. You have to be aggressive. You have to, you know. It, football not a game for a timid person on the field. You no, can be sir. timid and shy off the field, but once you own the field, you got to turn that switch on. You got to be aggressive. And, and if you're not aggressive, football might not be the sport for you. You not might want to go and hit the layup you. line. Yeah, it, might, it, not, it ain't no might not. It ain't the sport for you. Not unless you run a 4 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't many of them out there, so it ain't for you, kid. Yeah. Okay. Major pass. Now that we got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, man. We talk about um we talk about football. Well, I guess this this ain't funny. This ain't funny at all. But um since we're talking about football, we can go straight to the NFL. Uh, young man by the name of Henry Henry Ruggs. Henry Ruggs was a, a wide receiver. I think he played for he played for Las Vegas. Yeah, the Raiders. Yeah, the Raiders. Yeah, so what ended up happening uh, last year, Henry Ruggs at 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, whatever it was, was speeding in his souped-up car, whatever car it was. I'm not quite sure what car it was, but he got up to like over 100 miles an hour, and he ended up uh, hitting a lady and killing her and her dog. Killed her and her dog. And so they went through – they went through the court system and everything. Come to find out, young brother ended up getting how, how much time he got? Uh, three to four ten. To ten, years? Three, huh? to ten. three to ten years. Yep, three to ten years, man. Three to ten years. Now, I wouldn't have known anything about this. I mean, I, I did know about the accident and stuff like that, but I didn't know about the sentencing until I saw OJ Simpson. If man. y'all don't follow OJ on Twitter, OJ is one of the, the greatest followers on Twitter. He always start off, hey, Twitter world. He start off all his <laughs> tweets with that. He don't type shit. He only do video tweets. Hey, OJ, OJ think he untouchable. I'm like, man, you best, you best stay out of spotlight, bro. <laughs> but, OJ, but he had OJ, a good point, though. OJ had a good point. OJ wasn't never convicted of no murder. Yep. OJ was found innocent. He was found yeah. innocent. Of but I'm saying, lay low. In that same you. court, in that same court, Henry Ruggs went to now. You got lucky. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's the crazy thing. What OJ was saying, OJ was like, "Yo, he got eight to thirty-three years. They gave him an eight to thirty-three year sentence, and all he did was go and take back his stuff. He took back goods that was stolen from him that another court had deemed was stolen from him. And while he was going to take it back, another person who was with him had a gun, had a pistol." And they pulled out the pistol. They didn't point it. They didn't do anything. And then, uh, well, the person testified that, yeah, he had a pistol. He said, OJ ain't know about it. But they still gave OJ all that time for taking his own stuff back. And OJ said, well, hell, I got all this time. And my man only got three to 10 years. I said, hey, that, <laughs> I understand your pain, Juice. Right, I'm, Juice. Like, I'm like, OJ, man, be quiet, dog. Like, <laughs> good point or not, lay low before they before they start uh, investigating you some other. Don't just say bring it on. He ain't got nothing to hide. <laughs> OJ just spoke the truth. OJ spoke the truth, man. If that was somebody else that wasn't a celebrity or or NFL player or whatever, man, that you would be facing a lot more time than that, though. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what though, I don't know, man. Vehicular vehicular manslaughter. That's 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 a that's a a weird. Uh, you see some of them times like people who get DUI cases and kill people. Man, sometimes 
them dudes only get like you know five six years in jail man this, this man know. this man wasn't just speeding though he was going like 150 yeah 150 dog like like everybody in this world well i ain't gonna say everybody in this world but a lot of people done had too many drinks and decided to hit that road but most people try to be careful <laughs> yeah. yeah he was 150 dot like that ain't cool in no circumstance mm -mm. Mm -mm. but the thing is what the only thing i tell them is you in the nfl they provide yep. for you they provide that for you, so why not use it? If I know I got a, a free Uber, all I got to do is call them up, whatever. That's the first thing I'm doing if I know I'm going out drinking. Look, I'm going to be out drinking. I'm going to call you. Uh, by this such and such time, I need to be picked up. They got to start being smarter, man. Yeah, I mean, they going to take you to start and being smarter. They just run around here making. Like I wouldn't even drive. Yeah, for real. He, he yeah, go to crazy. He go to crazy things. Get him bro. Wait. I'm gonna take it. I'm, I'm gonna take it even deeper than what you just said, bro. You said like they can give them a call before and be like, "Yo, I'm gonna be out. Pick me up around this time." But that NFL program is so deep where even if you drove there, all you got to do is call and say, "Hey, I'm drunk. I need somebody to come and get me and take my car home." They got the combo service. Where they send two people out there, one to get you and the other one to take the car to the house. That's how that's how that's how oh, crazy man. it is for, if you in, and, if you in the league. And they and they in Vegas, so you know it's plenty of resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, resources so. are there. Um, even if he even if he was or wasn't getting a whole lot of time, man. The thing about it is, you took somebody's life, man. Senseless, senselessly, you could have that could have been avoided. Yeah, so he he actually said that you know he's gonna make it his life mission to you know mentor and do things like that for people who are um, drunk drivers and stuff like that. So I mean, out of that tragedy, maybe something good come out of it. I mean, because from all I know, and I, I've heard some interviews, I've heard Nick Saban talk about him because he played at Alabama, right? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. just saying like. Dude ain't never got in trouble before. Ain't never did nothing wrong with a good guy. But he made that one wrong decision. Changed his whole yeah. life. Like, you was a, I mean, he was really fast. I don't know. I don't know how good a wide receiver he was. But, I mean, man was a millionaire. Made it to the NFL. One choice. Changed his whole life. Yeah. And, and that's and all it takes. You know, it's crazy. My daddy used to always tell me, he said, ain't hey, nothing open. He said, ain't nothing open after 12, but legs in the jail. He said, that's the only thing. Only thing is open is legs in the jail. In the Waffle in the House. house. <laughs> in the Waffle House. But, but if you think about it, though, man, when do most fuck-ups happen, man? Most of, most of the time, people get in trouble. I think it was... um Early mornings? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened in the early morning, but mm -hmm. but I can't remember if it was Herman... Not uh, was was Herman... Uh, the coach, not Herman Moore. Herman Edwards. Uh, Edwards. Herman Edwards. Herman Edwards. He had a real good speech or whatever. He was saying how all problems, usually when somebody get in trouble, it'd be a couple of things involved. He said they usually be out after midnight. He says usually some liquor. And he says probably a woman. He said <laughs> nine out of ten, when you get all three, somebody going to jail at night. No. <laughs> And her, that's what her and Mel was saying. It was something toward that. Uh, it was something toward that, man. And uh, mm -hmm. who is that? Nicole Kiana. Nicole Kiana. Kiana. You need to stop talking about OJ. OJ is innocent. OJ is innocent, Nicole. That man has been, um, he went through his trial. Mm -hmm. A jury of his peers found him innocent. You need to get off of OJ. Leave OJ alone. Find the real killer. You know what? And the thing is, man, if you trust, you know, I trust the jury. I trust the jury system in the OJ case. So I got to trust them in the uh, Tory Lanes and, and and make the Stallion <laughs> case, man. And <laughs> lo and behold, we just <laughs> found out that Tory Lanes has been sentenced. I don't know. How much time did he get? 10 years? 10 yeah. years. For a pinky toe. 
So I shoot me in my pinky toe. Ten years, man. He, he went and shot uh shot Meg the Stallion. And so now he got to sit his ass down for a little while, man. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, and here go the thing when it comes to taking a plea and stuff, excuse me, taking a plea and stuff like that. Do you take the plea to get out of stuff or do you fight it? Well, they offered him a plea, I think, for less. I know it was like less than two years. He could have took took the plea and did less than two years. And hell, he probably would have been out in a year. He but still he say wanted he to innocent. fight it. He still say he's innocent. Well, like, either you did it or you didn't. Like, like for real, though, why, why do we get to a point where you had to shoot a girl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no, nah, well, come on, bro. Once again, once again, after 12 o'clock, Liquor and a woman. You can't win. You can't win. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, you can't that's another, win. That's, that's, another, that's another check on the box saying, hey, I told you. Yeah. Hey, that naughty head, they be drinking that naughty head. Yeah, drinking that gin, that gin making sin, boy. Uh, you don't yeah, know how to handle that thing. But no, money, they, huh? Uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, bro. I'm just saying for real though, like you're you gonna say, hey, I'm gonna shoot you in your foot. Like what? Like that's crazy to me, dog. Like, like this ain't Harlem Nights. <laughs> that's, that was a movie. That wasn't real. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, Rod said if he took the plea, he'd be a felon and then he'd get deported. Yeah, that is right. Oh boy, he is from Canada. He's from Canada, but shit. My thing is though, man, if they deport you. Hey man, you just become a Canadian star. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck that. My, I'm not. I'm not trying to spend because you know what the risk is. The risk was he could have got uh, up to twenty something years in jail. That was the risk. That was the risk, man. And I and, and I can't. If you tell me you're gonna give me two, and I probably and I'm probably gonna serve one, I will take it. Hell, he done been in jail since December, so you done already knocked six months out. What state you know, were they in? Huh? What they state were they? No, California, California, my bad, California. California. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but, you know, but, these different states got different laws. So. Yeah, but here go the thing, though. It don't matter to me. Anytime somebody go to court and say <laughs> that is the guy who shot me, come on, man, you ain't gonna beat that. You, you ain't gonna beat that if the person you shot. You didn't kill them, and they can come to court and testify. Come on, man, you can't, you can't beat that. Hey, I want to see what what her feet look like. <laughs> 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 they all messed up. Well, oh what? Oh, did he hit the he hit the ground and the, the ricochets with so uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. You know, I I wasn't in the car, so I don't know exactly what happened. But but it's like, Let me ask you a question. You said you were Pretty just much. taking the plea. But if you feel like you're you're not guilty or you, I, I don't think he took went to court thing knowing I shot this girl, and I'm gonna not take this two year deal or whatever the plea was, and 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 have a chance of getting twenty years. You see what I'm saying? He had to feel like he could beat this, or he, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no way you'll trade twenty years for two. So yeah, he had to take it to trial if he hadn't fought it that much. Yeah, you're uh, right about that. You're right about that. A. A. Ron just said she said she couldn't remember. Uh, no, she remembers. She got on the stand. <laughs> she yeah. got on the stand and said he, he shot me. He shot me. Yeah, <laughs> like like pop. <laughs> she got he on the stand me. and said he pointed pointed to him in court. Pointed to him. So she like, used that pop. Yeah, you shot me, but your pump didn't finish. Now you about to feel the wrath of a menace. <laughs> I hear them up. <laughs> Tori, I'm going to hit you up. But she got to wait the, a while to get her lick back, though. And the thing I, I, is. Hey, so do y'all know the, the whole backstory on this? Was they, was they actually boyfriend and girlfriend or what? Yeah, they was. Well, yeah, they I mean, was they together. Were, they was well, fucking around. Them. Yeah. They're fucking around. And that that was like must be the greatest odd couple ever. Cause Meg the Stallion, she like 5'10 and Tori Lane like 5'2. <laughs> he that little? Yeah, he a little dude, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of them cats small like that though, dog. Yeah, I know. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that dude snatched flies off the stage. Color money. Color money. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that that's just an odd situation though. I, I really want to wonder what happened for a, a gun to even be pulled in that situation. They in the I back of that. No, they in the back of that limo. I know exactly what happened. They in the back of the limo. Look, look, look what happened. They they in the back of the limo. They in there. They done been drinking. They done been partying hard. And then she came out and called them short. <laughs> called them, she called them short, called them little. And you know them short, short dudes got that uh Napoleonic complex. complex. That little man complex. Napoleonic, Napoleonic complex. <laughs> and so he, he pulled out that pistol. <laughs> he pulled out that pistol. And she said, well, shoot me, nigga. Shoot me. And just like on on come uh, on Harlem Nights, he looked to the side. Somebody else put their arm up, like, "Hey!" He pointed down. He pointed hey, down Bam. and said, "Dance, bitch!" Shot him. Bam got a good point. He said, "That's why. He, that's the only place he could have shot. That's why he shot in the foot." Yeah, you were he down there already. Yeah, yeah. Down there. <laughs> he probably tried to kick him. He probably tried to kick him, and he, and he hit that pinky toe. Hey, that's funny. I don't know. Oh, hey, Aaron hey, hey, said he smashed both of them, and she told Kelsey because he was actually dating Kelsey and not mad, not Meg. So apparently, her best friend was Kelsey, and and they Kelsey and who? what he said, he shot a he shot Kelsey. But he go the thing. He he go he go something else. This dude made phone calls from the jail talking about he's sorry for what happened. And, and Diane, <laughs> Diane Dubo, one of my favorite teachers over there, she's talking about not the men on here talking as if they were there. We was there. We had the secret RIP 28. We had the secret RIP 28 uh, camera inside the uh, inside the limo. That's right. Saw hey, how, how that be? I seen the whole thing. I seen the whole <laughs> thing. I seen the whole thing. Tori <laughs> got mad because he called us short. And he got the little man, Tory got the little man disease. He got the little man disease and then he went and shot in the foot. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> hey, Bam said, uh, hey, hey, Ron, uh, know too much about this dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ron is, is he's, a, he's on it. He know everything. You know, he the king of petty, king of petty. So he nah, know all that. Shaquille, I mean, well, Diane Dubois talking about it's too much estrogen on here for me. No, a lot of, a lot of test, no, test we can't even pronounce no, either one of them. We ain't going with that, Diane. Excuse me, excuse me, say what? Yeah, excuse you me, ain't, finna, you ain't what? finna spread that blasphemous information. Excuse me, say what? Sorry. <laughs> I ain't gonna drop estrogen up in here. No, nah, but, but, you know, maybe, maybe we do need some, some estrogen. We need, we might need that female opinion on the show this week. To talk about to talk about that, uh, but but he, but the thing is though, man, the little dude. Diane seems like the perfect person to do it. Yeah, she had a she had a really good podcast too. I like that. I liked her podcast. She stopped doing it. I enjoyed I enjoyed listening to her podcast while she was doing it. But anyway, um, the dude shot him, so he need to go to jail. I mean, it ain't really it ain't really rocket science, man. You shot the girl, so. Go to jail. You know, I, I feel, you know, you lost your career. And this the thing, man. This is why, this is why people, liquor and guns don't work. They don't work together, man. You can't be out here drunk holding a gun because bad shit going to happen. It is going to happen if you drunk and holding a pistol. Bad shit going to happen. Eh, sorry, bro. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Do your time and and uh, learn from it. And he's still a young dude. So I think <laughs> so he'll, he'll still be okay when he get out. Yeah, because way you, way you figure, what he probably gonna have to, if he got ten years, he probably gonna have to do about seven of them years. I don't know California a little bit more lenient. He might get out earlier than that. Just don't drop the soap, you know. You know, right. yeah, yeah. No, don't yeah, don't drop okay. the soap. Cause he he is a little dude. Uh, ain't like he gonna be fighting off fighting off too many folks. <laughs> <laughs> he he a little fella, so you know, 
They might take your lucky charms. <laughs> magically you delicious. <laughs> I hope nobody take your lucky charms while you're in there, man. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was talking to, to one of my partners up the other day. He was like, hey, bro, when you get a life sentence of, of so many years, you might as well go and pick you out a boyfriend. <laughs> I said, boy, you crazy. Uh, mm-mm-mm. That's why uh, I stay I stay out of trouble. Yeah, man, I don't want no parts of that. I don't want no smoke. I like vagina too much. I, I don't even think I can fight no more. Like, yeah. I try. I try, but, <laughs> but, but how many rounds I'm gonna last in, in the fight? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, bro. I'm like, man, I ain't, ain't trying that, to fight you, bro. Ain't nothing back there for me, bro. That's why I stay free. Ain't nothing back there for me, bro. Unless you're trying to harm my kid or something crazy go on like that. All that, all that foolishness, man, that ain't for me. I ain't getting locked down over no BS. Can't get tricked off the street. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. you know, that's what I said. We had this, I had conversations, you know, random conversations with my son. It's like, yo, you can't let anybody trick you off the street. And that's what no. it comes down to, man. And somebody talking shit about you or say something about you. And then you want to jump bad and act bad and get out there and fight or whatever. Well, you going to be the one to get in trouble. It's always the one. It ain't never the first one who throw the lick who get in trouble. It's always the, the second one or the last one who throw the lick. Mm-hmm. He the one who get in trouble. So, so man, hey, don't let these fools trick you out the street. Don't. Go yeah, ahead. I mean, that's, I think that's one thing football tell us, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody hits you after the play, and then you hit them back, you always get the play. You know what I'm saying? It's just mm-hmm. life. It's the same thing in life, man. Football taught us yeah. about life, man. Yeah, A. A. Rod talking about him and R. Kelly gonna do a mixtape. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. Why I bring R. Kelly in this. I do miss yeah, good catch R. Kelly. Strays. Catch your strays, R. Kelly. Catch your strays, man. We need we need a good R. Kelly album, man. You know what though? I bet you he in jail. I bet you making some great music though. I ain't gonna lie. I know he done wrote some great songs while he's been locked up. Hey, hey, you know, you know, he made it locked in the closet, man. I'm locked in the jailhouse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he probably got about 30, 30 he said, editions. Hey, he but ain't he, got no more. He ain't got no more material unless he's talking about old stuff. And if he got new material, making him get that ooh up sound or something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, but y'all know it, it wasn't just girls he was messing with. Y'all heard about that now. No, I ain't hear about that. Now, that's new yeah, to me. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah, well, it was yeah. one, dude, one dude who came in, who came into it, who came in. He was talking, talking mad, mad. He was saying that R. Kelly was on some weird pervert shit. So, so yeah. Oh, no. Dad, I, I, I ain't know nothing about that, man. I ain't hear Metal Night Sylvester or something. No, I don't even play me like that, bro. Don't oh, play. Robert I'm Sylvester. Good. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> don't even, don't Come even on, play. man. Yeah, yeah. don't put slide down. No, I, 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 I didn't say that. I just said don't do it like that. I just said I like, say, I, like, I, like I like grown women with stretch marks, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, heavy on the stretch marks. <laughs> heavy on the stretch marks. I need, I need grown women with stretch marks. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The, the stretch marks let you know it's validation, baby. <laughs> Tiger, tiger they, they done been here for a while. Leopard print. They, they done, hey, stretch mark, stretch marks ain't nothing but a road map to the coochie. That's all they are. That's all they are. It's a road map to the coochie. Uh, I, I don't think we need no road map. We know where it's at. Hey, my tongue got to follow something. <laughs> at least we hope so. My tongue got to follow something, baby. Wait a minute, but, now. Wait a minute. Awesome. Hey man, hey, you know, I'm I'm just here here to make sure she uh she's happy at the end of the day. Or I look at it and say, hey, I beat you. <laughs> that's more, that's be more like it. I beat you. Gotta be quicker than that. You gotta, you gotta be, be quicker, quicker than, than that. that. No way. Well. <laughs> yeah, man. But a lot of crazy stuff, man. But you know, um I, I guess, man, uh, you know, I'm in Atlanta. Me and Chance in Atlanta, Braun, <laughs> Shaman talking about stretch, stretch marks equal breakfast in the morning. You right. You right. 
And you 100% right. You got them stress marks. She know how to treat you right. She'll treat you right. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Sly, hey, Shaman, Sly will mess some names up. I'll just... I've been calling him Shaman. I've been calling him Shaman since he was in the, since he was in the ninth grade. <laughs> Apologize for the name. Uh, he he gonna Max be Shaman. He, and... he gonna be Shaman forever to me. That's my bro right there. That's my brother right there. There's young Shaman. That is my brother. But yeah, man. Um, you know, I don't know what we're talking about, man. We guess you, Tory you Lanez being the, a star. You and, Chance, you and Chance is in the A. Yeah, we're in Atlanta, man. It's no longer the ATL. It's the it's the Bay TL, man. Beyonce took over the city, man. Yeah, took LB, over QB the city. LBQ TV or whatever. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Beyonce put on a concert. She did her Renaissance. I guess it's the Renaissance tour or whatever. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure the exact name of the tour, but Beyonce had a concert and she took over Atlanta and every woman in Atlanta had, was wearing cowboy hats and cowboy boots and hell, a lot of the, uh, you know how you say this, the alternative lifestyle gentlemen was, was out and they was out in full support. Of Beyonce, man, Atlanta was uh, crazy, man. And she was at Charlotte early in the week. So it, it was crazy, man. Beyonce is, um, I saw the On The Run tour some years ago. I saw the, the On The Run tour. And I, I told myself, I said, yeah, man, I, I wanted to check out, you know, see Jay-Z in concert. But I ain't gonna lie, man. Beyonce, she, she, she solidified it for me. I was like, yeah, she she's the greatest entertainer currently right now of her generation she's the greatest entertainer of her generation right yeah don't now. get yourself in trouble and say of all time man. oh no no I, I, I ain't gonna say of all time i ain't gonna say of all time yeah. but, i thought you but, was close to it boy but the but the show she put on man she put on an over-the-top show man and and i don't see you you don't hear anybody walking out the show upset and you don't see nobody walking out the show mad, man. Yeah, after you done paid all that money, you better not be mad. Even if you, even if you is, you better act like you have, because you ain't getting yeah. that money back for Beyonce, baby. <laughs> and from what I hear, the ticket prices was they got up there now. I that's, mean, I asked anybody if anybody went to the show in Atlanta or Charlotte or any other city. Let us know, you know, what you think. Well, because because it's crazy, man. You talk about the prices. Our homeboy said he he was on the third deck. The third deck <laughs> and his tickets was 100, 117 a piece. Yeah. 117 a piece. You say you couldn't even tell which one was Beyonce. <laughs> uh, you had to you had to have some binoculars. He <laughs> said, see, see, Beyonce looked like an ant down there unless you looked at on the Jumbotron. <laughs> so that's how you really watched the show was on the Jumbotron. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Stacy just said then tickets weren't high. They were like regular prices. High prices were VIP. Hey, look, no, man, I don't know too many regular about. prices where you're in the third deck and it's $117 in the third deck. And he got his on the first come. He was one of the first ones because he got it before it was opened up to the public. So I don't know, man. A- $117 for the third deck. That's man. I know somebody that paid five over five hundred, and they weren't even nowhere near the floor. So I don't know what you consider cheap or high price or expensive, but that sounds pretty expensive to me. Hey, it's better watch on anything on TV to me these days. Anyway, like you can go to a, any kind of game. Like I can watch on TV free or pay five hundred dollars to go see. What's the thing I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm watching on TV, but but uh yeah. yeah, but Beyonce, you know, you know we got these beehive people out here, but I take Kelly Rowland before Beyonce. I just got yeah, baby, you take there. Kelly Rowland as what? Uh, okay. I like I, I think she can sing just as good. And no, she can't. Great no, hey. she can't. No, she can't. Beyonce, you you think Beyonce's a singer or she, an she entertainer? She ain't, she ain't no Whitney Houston or nothing. 
I think she, she sang she better than Kelly Rowland. No, no, I, no, I think she sang that. better than Kelly Rowland. Now you you just part of the Beehive right now. Above yeah, buzz. I might be. I might be. Yeah, you might be. Now, entertainer, businesswoman, all that, entrepreneur and all that, she might got Kelly, but singing, I don't know. I, I, I'm 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 a side with the El Presidente. That's my quarterback. Maybe uh, let me be your motivation. I don't know, but 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 the question is though, the question is that kind of floating out there, and Stacy and Stacy kind of brought it up was uh is Beyonce the closest thing to Michael Jackson since Michael Jackson? And then the person put, I'm talking about the live entertainment aspect and fan fanaticism. I know no one can create that type of frenzy like Michael, but Beyonce is the closest thing that I can think of since he died. Beyonce is is like that with the women. Like, like, okay, if you if you go to the Beyonce concert, you're going to it with your girl. You ain't just going to them all by yourself. A guy, as a guy. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jackson, everybody's going to him. It, it didn't matter yeah. who, what, when, where, how, why, apostrophe or whatever. <laughs> but it was like Michael Jackson was must-see, must-see uh, at all times. But Beyonce, to me, it seemed like he got, she got the little beehive, the girls, all them love her for some, for some reason. But, I mean, that's a guy. I mean, you ain't riding down the street by Beyonce while you driving it. Anybody. Anybody on, on, uh, on live Usher, right Usher, here? Usher, Usher is everybody overlooked Usher as a live entertainer. I'm I'm a I'm gonna pause y'all for one second. I'm gonna pause y'all for one second, man. I let, let me check this out. Uh Alvin Hinton said, Hell nah, Chris Brown. Motherfuckers, you crazy. Chris Brown. Uh, cra- Chris Brown uh, is a great entertainer. He has some hits. He has, you know, plenty of hits. He, he, Chris Brown can even sing. He can even sing, but he Chris Brown ain't no no way close to no goddamn Beyonce level, or or my, damn sure ain't no close to no Michael Jackson level when it I comes know. to she, fandom. But they didn't say they didn't say if they were close to Michael Jackson. They said of this generation. I even know. if you say this generation, Chris Brown ain't close to Beyonce. So so is Chris Brown and Usher. Like, all right, somebody gave you some free tickets. They say, I got free tickets to Chris Brown concert. I got free tickets to Usher. Which one are you going to go to? I'm going to Usher because that's my to... age group. Yeah, I'm, going to I'm older now. I'm older. All right, well, yeah. I'm saying, though, is it, it, Chris now, Brown? If, if you ask my little sister, she might say Chris Brown. Yeah, because that's her age group. That's her. Yeah. That's who she grew uh, up on. That's, that's still going right now, though. Yeah, Usher killing them right now. Us are killing yeah. them. But you know, but, these kids don't appreciate the, the old folk, man. You got cats talking about Young Thug and all them better rappers than Tupac. <laughs> so I can't, I can't listen to nothing they say. I can't. Not when it comes to music and fashion. I can't. So uh, I'm going to go us, if, if you if I had free tickets. But but my thing is to get back to the to the Michael Jackson part, why none of them will ever come close to the fanatics and, and just the sheer fandom, Michael Jackson stood still for 15 minutes and motherfuckers was falling out. Passing people was out. fading. People, people were passing out, just was a, screaming was a 15, his name. And, and, yeah, and was, he just was, stood still. Wow. Yeah. He just stood still. Hell, when he did the Super Bowl, when he did halftime at the Super Bowl, he stood still for three minutes. You know how long three minutes is for a motherfucker to stand still? Yeah. You you know how long it is for you to be yelling for three minutes straight. Bruh, ain't, yelling. Ain't nobody, just... dog, listen. Ain't nobody touching MJ, I believe, man. Nobody. Nah. nah nope. Nah. And, and the thing is, Thriller sold 100 million copies. You got to think about this. He sold 100 million copies when you had to actually go to the record store to buy a record. You know, now you can download anything you want for free. You can get all these streams and all these listening just by clicking a button on your phone. You don't even have to get out your bed. But Michael, you had to go to the record store to buy it. If you wanted to get tickets to a Michael Michael Jackson concert, you had to wait in line 
to get tickets to his concert. Now you can do all this shit on the phone, man. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Ain't nobody on that level, man. Ain't nobody on that level of stardom as mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. Hey, I know uh, Michael Jackson came to Columbia one time. When? Uh, we, was, we was young. I remember I asked my dad, I said, hey, can I get a ticket? He, he was like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. He was like, you know. And then I, I had a neighbor who he was a lot older. I was like, man, dad, he out that bull. You know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna give me no ticket. He like, he like, you understand when you get older. <laughs> I was like, well, I still want to go. Bro, I, I don't, I don't, man, dog. Uh, Michael's something else, man. Michael was something else. And it's just, hey, it sucks to be you. I mean, it's it's cool that that Usher and Chris Brown, you know, they're they're good guys, they're good performers. They are, they're great performers, and they put on a great show, but the level that Michael Jackson was, I just don't think you'll ever see that again. I don't think you'll ever see a star. Because uh, to be honest, Michael was the most famous person on the planet. He was the most famous person on yeah, the planet. Yeah, I wasn't a person who didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. care if you were two years old, you knew Michael Jackson was. Exactly. And it's like, they certain places in the United States, Beyonce can go and people not going to know who she is. You know? Uh, not, not, uh, not, what, uh, what age? What age uh, you talking now? That's that's a good that's a good uh conversation there. Is, is that true? I don't know. That. I think I, so. I think for for an older crowd or an older generation, I think it's very true. I think no, for a generation above is. us, a generation yeah. above us, and 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 I remember we got to get out of the black community. If we get out of the black community, a generation above us. They don't know who the hell Beyonce is. Is she more oh, popular than Jay-Z? I, 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 dis, uh -huh. I disagree. I disagree. Oh, she way more popular than Jay-Z. I, Jay I, I disagree. I disagree totally that when you get a generation above us and you get out the black community, that's how you, how you think she didn't became so rich. She came rich off the black dog. She, no. She's global, dog. She's global. She, she is global. But what I'm saying, what what I'm saying is she's global, but if you take your parents' generation, you take your parents' generation and you take white folk from your parents' generation, I don't think they know who they I don't think they know I, who no, they, I wouldn't I wouldn't say they know they could go in depth to um uh to who she is, her music, what she's done and what she's contributed to the music world. I'm, but to know who she is, yeah. I'm willing to say. I'm willing to say in in Idaho, she can walk down the street and you not know who she is. And you have and she'll be able to walk down the street without getting mobbed. Man, you said that you no, said that coming from that, a cat bro. named Shannon. The cat you call Shannon said that. So you gonna believe you gonna get on here and say that. No, I I, 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 I agree. I, I think I don't think you're gonna go nowhere and they, they don't know who Beyonce is. I, I just don't believe it. I'm not a Beyonce fan at all. Check this out. I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something that might piss you off. She's not more popular. More people know Snoop than know Beyonce. I think Snoop may be one of the most famous people on the planet. But Snoop been in the game sixty years, though. True. <laughs> That's he has a he's he was Snoop was in class with some of them people. Snoop, but Snoop came out. He came out. Deep Cover came out in '91. Beyonce and Destiny Child released their first album like in 96. Snoop only been in the game five years longer than Beyonce. He only been in the game five years longer. I don't know about that. We might have known about Snoop five years before Beyonce. No, his but he first, had, he, his first but song. He, he, I, I don't know. I, 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 I disagree with that, dog. His I, first I still song, think. You, his where are you going to go and they don't know Beyonce, dog? I truly believe. Well, and, and this is they my know thing. Over in Australia and all that, bro, she's selling out over there. But so everybody, how you me? everybody know, likes I a disagree. smoker. Everybody likes a smoker. I think Snoop, and it's not, and, and I don't want you to get me to say that I think Snoop. No, I'm not saying it, it, it may be that Snoop is more popular. That's yeah. not the question. The question just, is do you think they know Beyonce? I don't and think, I, 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 I think there's certain pockets. Sure. 
I think there's certain pockets that that Beyonce can go and people not know who she is. She can walk down the street. That, and, and that's my judge. My my judge is can can you walk down the street without somebody knowing you? I don't think it's too many places in the world Snoop Dogg can go and he can walk down the street and people don't know him. I think those same so in places North, in, in Idaho and North Dakota, what y'all was talking about, uh, they know Snoop. Yeah, they, they know, know Beyonce. And, and, they know and, you Beyonce you and you don't think they're gonna know Beyonce? I don't oh, think so. I, 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 yeah, I disagree with uh, that. Too. Come on, man. I come on now. I like everybody on, know man. her. Everybody know. Her. Yeah, like Alvin said, neither one of them ain't walking down no street nowhere and not get noticed. Like. And that's like that's like I don't know. He can't go. He can't go nowhere in Columbia. Everybody know him. That's true. <laughs> he, and, he the uh, Columbia and, and Snoop. Stacy just said Bay cannot snoop as well. Rihanna that's B, can't man. Either. B not Bay. B B B. Well, B can't. But I think I I don't think um, Rihanna. I, I I don't I don't think Rihanna is as famous as either one of them. Now Rihanna may be richer than the both of them. Rihanna is probably richer than the both of them, but you got to remember Rihanna ain't put out no music in six, seven years since that uh, makeup line took off the way it took off. I don't, I don't know, Sly. I, I, I don't know. That's a tough. That's tough. It is tough. It is tough. Now, me personally, that's a judgment I, you know, call coming from us now. You know, I'm a, I'm a secret member of the Beehive, but I'm a I'm a proud member of the Navy. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Yeah. The Navy is where it's at. Who's talking about Cash Money? Cash Money is an army, right, but he had a Navy. I'm talking about Rihanna Navy. I'm a proud <laughs> member of the Navy. Yeah, yeah I, I'm Rihanna over Beyonce, Kelly Rowland over Beyonce. I'm a Shante over Beyonce. That's just me. You Beyonce hater, man. Yeah, hey, you might think so, but I ain't, I ain't hating. She good, but I like them better. That's just me. Me too. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. On, I'm not a Beyonce fan at all. I mean, she's she's good. Wow. Great as well. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm not a Beyonce fan at all. I right. I ain't part of the Bi, but now Rihanna. I'm I, I'm in the Navy. I'm 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 I'm, 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 in, I'm in the Navy, but I I, I don't know. I guess I, I don't uh, know. It's too many people uh, that uh, that think Beyonce is. I don't know. I don't know. To, to me, I, I I put it like this. To me, I I feel like these women think Beyonce is the perfect woman or something like that, and, and that just don't sit well with me. Like just because she light skin, she got a decent body or whatever. I mean, because you know, you know, when they when they show these different pictures and videos and stuff like that. You know, stuff look different. Then when you see him in another scenario, you're like, "Yeah, hey, your body don't look the same as, as it did in this picture. But it, it, to me, it's just like, girls think, all right, I got to look like Beyonce. And I, I I think, to me, I hate that. Because I'm like, hey, be yourself, baby. You fine, too. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't think you got to look like Beyonce to be, uh, to be beautiful. And I think a lot of women feel that way. And I and, and that just throw me off from her for some reason. So I... I I like the other, you know, chocolate melatonin ladies. Melanin? Melatonin, yeah, melanin. M magically melanin ladies. <laughs> that's, that's just me. Hey, hey, man, you know how I feel about chocolate women. You know my 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 dream, my my hall pass is Niecy Nash. That hurt me too. <laughs> she, she don't want, she don't want she nothing, don't to, want do nothing to do with you, ain't <laughs> She don't want nothing to do with my kind no more, but you know I love me some Nisa Nash. Nisa Nash is number one for forever. And then look at that. <laughs> uh I appreciate what you just said, James Willis. Uh Alvin Hinton talking about he'll take um Badu over Erica Badu over all of them. And then James James Willis just said Alvin Badu is gonna have you in Debo chicken coop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that was a good one, Jay. Hey, hey, me and the wife went to uh, Erica Du concert, and she she found some dude out the crowd, uh, and she was like, "Hey, go to, go to the uh, you know the bus, roll one up for me." <laughs> she, hey, she had him ready. I was like, "Oh, that boy in trouble." 
<laughs> boy, I tell you, boy, that I, that that Erica Badu pussy, boy, she she put that thing. She she changed brothers into vegans and wearing all type of stuff. <laughs> Erica Badu put something on you, boy. I don't know if I'm ready for it. <laughs> you ain't. That's why you ain't got get worried about it. I don't know if I'm ready, but uh, but yeah, man, just I don't know, man. I I do think. Oh Lord, I think I think <laughs> that uh, if I'm bad, looking at some of these texts, um, I think Beyonce is a great entertainer. She puts on, I think she puts the greatest show on out there right now. And for those of you who haven't seen, I don't know if it's still on Netflix. If you hadn't seen Homecoming on Netflix, man, I'm telling you, it's worth the the hour, or however long it is, man. It's a great. She puts on a great show. She puts on. Try a check great. check the uh the Zoom uh thing. Oh my bad, I had <laughs> went out of it. But yeah, man, she puts on a great. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it, <laughs> have people going crazy. Same. Have them crazy. Yeah. But yeah, man, she puts on she puts on the great show, and I think she's probably the greatest. You know, maybe she could be the greatest living entertainer we have. Yeah, we don't. I don't agree with. You. I mean, I, I I think it's a whole bunch of people mushed in the middle right now. You know, I don't think it's no greatest right now. I don't know, man. It's hard to say who put on a better show. Like like I'm saying, okay, so we had a conversation before the show came on. Ninety. 90% of the people at that show is women or men that are going with their women. And then the other the other percentage is gay dudes. Yeah. So you ain't go. You ain't did you have a did you even think about going? Uh, no, I knew I couldn't yeah. afford it. Well, we, we, <laughs> well, I'm saying you ain't think about going. You, you were like, nah, nope. I'm, I'm I'm straight on that. I was like, hey, so with the women, oh. she she is very, very popular. But for me. I ain't, I don't want to go see no Beyonce show. That's me. Right. It's a good show though, bro. It's a good show. <laughs> okay, but it's a lot of good shows. Now you go to think I've never paid for a Beyonce show, so I guess that's easier for me to say. You know, I well, I went, like I said, I went on the on the run to it. It was a gift, you know. So. I, I'll, I'll tell you this too: before Kanye um, went crazy. I went to one of his shows. That thing was off the chain, but that boy was very entertaining, man. He was he was the truth, and you know, things happen in life, and you know he done you know changed a little bit. But when he was first came out, man, that boy was on top. He he could he could have been one of them. I'm going I'm going to Wiz Khalifa show. <laughs> hey. I'm, I'm I'm down with Wiz and Snoop Dogg, so I'm going with Snoop Dogg as the the the, the, the best living performer, dog. Hey, Snoop, hey, Wiz, yeah, Wiz, Wiz, the one who got that skateboard song. I don't know. Who, who, Wiz, who, who, who Wiz had like the song Black. No, you talking about Lupe Fiasco? You okay, talking about yeah, Lupe, yeah, Lupe okay. Fiasco? Kiss, kick, push. Yeah, kick. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 that Lupe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but Lupe, I. Lupe. I know Wiz and Snoop went on tour together. Wiz, they go on tour a lot. They they keep. No, I, I might have paid two hundred and something for that for that cheap for that cheap. Just yeah, just to be in the house, I might have been. You know what I'm saying? So I might have splurged on that a little bit. Because you definitely <laughs> you, you would have caught the contact just walking in. Hey, just pulling up in the parking lot. But mm -hmm. the tour bus, you open the door to get off that. <laughs> it's gonna oh, yeah. it's gonna cloud half the city, boy. I would love to see that in, in California where everything where illegal. Where oh, everything goodness. goes. Yeah, man. You, you, we <laughs> weren't able to take it, dog. We just been in the atmosphere, we couldn't handle it. My love, my love's too sensitive for that. Too you sensitive. Passed man. out out there. <laughs> hey, check this out, man. I'm glad we said something about being sensitive. Cause right now what we got, um, I'm gonna pull something up. Now I'm probably gonna have to read it or give a an uh, overview because the print's going to be a little too small for everybody. But um, basically, it was a birthday party that went on not too long ago. And now this thing is blocking the screen. All right, here we go. Um, now check me when that happened. Uh, well, we had to start reading. <laughs> so tell me if I'm wrong. I took my baby to a party 
but the only food they had was chicken wings, hot dogs, and fries. There's nothing wrong with that, but my baby doesn't eat that. So I left me at party to get him something to eat. When we got back, they already sung happy birthday and cut the cake. The mother, who I considered a friend, told me that me and my baby couldn't have cake and ice cream because we missed the singing and the cake was only for people who sang and celebrated her son. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. I grabbed my baby and the gifts we brought off, off the gift table and we left. She texted me after the party and said I was wrong for taking his gifts back. There were only five bags on the table, but when I left, I took the four bags we brought. So essentially, the baby didn't have anything but one gift from the party. <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong, because I felt like I could have did her dirty and acted a fool at the damn party, but I did her a favor and just left without saying anything. And don't get on my post saying we could have handled it privately, because ain't no coming back from this, so there's no need to keep anything under wraps. You got one time to play with my baby, and it's fuck you. Edit. The party was 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. She's crying about us being late. We got there at 11.20. I asked about the menu the day before. She lied and said she didn't know the menu, but the caterer said the order was put in two weeks before. I didn't just walk out. I let her know where... I let her know we were going to the McDonald's at the end of the block and we were gone for no more than 20 minutes before we came back. Also, taking the gift bags wasn't really to punish the child because he didn't see me take them or even put them there for that matter. It was to teach my child that we don't support or be nice to bullies. Her four-year-old son told my baby, mama, you said you can't have no cake. So, no, so my mama said you can't have no cake so uh -oh. you can't have none. It was a wrap for his little ass too. I don't care. <laughs> now, as we read this story, a couple of things <laughs> crossed my mind. I think the girl was lying in the letter. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Stacy said, have you seen the screenshots of the text messages? Hmm. Hmm. Mm, no, we haven't. Yeah, so I guess it's some uh, more to well, the story. Parker, Stacey? It's more to the story. But but yeah, man, if, if you go to, I'm from the thought process, man. You go to a party, you bring the gifts, you leave the gifts, man. You can't punish that four-year-old for saying, my mama said you can't have cake. All that four-year-old is doing is doing what a four-year-old does and just- Repeat uh, his parents. Yeah, repeat, repeat his, his parents. parents. He just mm -hmm. repeating what he what he heard. So why are you gonna punish the four year old because his mama asshole? Well, I tell and you I what. don't even know. If, you know. You know. Yeah, that's that's real petty to say. If you wasn't here to sing happy birthday, you can't have cake. That yeah, that's that's petty as shit. So, I, like, 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 I was at that up. party and it was my gifts. They going back with me too. Call me petty. Call me what you want. That. And, and they, I bet you they did it in front of people too, with no decorum or anything. Uh -huh. I bet. So Give you me. have to take that into consideration too. Yeah. No, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about you can't have no cake. Where you been? You know how uh, we can act towards uh, each other. Yeah, so yeah. I guess you got to see how that put what that put her at. Uh, hey, but I, I, I really don't believe it's all the five gifts and she had four of them. <laughs> so, so, so it was all the five gifts. It was a big old party. Ain't nobody else bring nothing. And then you took yours. But she mad at you. She ain't mad at nobody else. There's yeah. 20, 20 people there who ain't bring no gifts either. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it's always an over-exaggeration these things sometimes. You know what I love about my RIP 28ers, man? My RIP 28ers, they stay on top of it, man. Now they getting us the uh, text message that she was, I ain't about to read all this shit, man. This is a whole lot to read. But, uh, yeah, the text message is kind of interesting. The text message kind of, they, yeah, they kind of interesting. The one girl, you know, this thing about women, man, they type these long ass paragraphs of shit you got to read, man. It, it's a lot to it, man. It, it, it's it's a lot to it. Uh, but but my thing is, I think that I think the chick is wrong. Both of them wrong. Let's let's get let's get let's get this real clear. Both of them yeah. wrong. Both of them wrong. Both of them dead wrong. You know, you don't let no kid 
you can't tell a kid that a kid can't eat cake and ice cream if a kid seeing everybody else eating cake and ice cream. That is that is fucked up. That that that's messed up to start off with. So yeah. you know, you kiss my ass over some shit like that if you tell my kid he can't have no cake and ice cream when he at a party. You know that's wrong. But then the the mom who took the gifts back. And she claimed the reason she took them back was because of what the four-year-old said. To me, that's bullshit. You know, the four-year-old ain't doing nothing but repeating what his mom said. You can't punish the four-year-old for that. So, yeah, both of y'all wrong. Both of y'all wrong. So. And what I don't like is when you get mad with each other, don't air each other laundry and stuff out like that. That ain't cool, man. If, if I get mad with one of my one of my boys, you chance or slide, I ain't gonna go out there and try to slander your character and, and defame you like that, man. That's I mean, if we ain't seeing eye to eye, then just let it go. It is what it is. Whatever we say to each other, leave it there. Don't go to Facebook or nowhere else and 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 and, and do yeah, that like that. Up, Cause ain't nobody and winning. Now like you that. end up on the podcast with a whole bunch of people talking about. Yeah, that. with everybody in your business. <laughs> mm-hmm. But but the thing everybody is though, I think. I think a lot of people though that's what they want. You know what I'm saying? They want the attention. They want to put this in, and that's that screenshot, the screenshot society that we live in, man. And and, and I figure a lot of stuff I do, if I have, you know, disagreements with somebody, I don't send it in text. I don't no. send it. I'm mad at you. I got something to say to you. I call you. I put, you know what I'm saying? I, I call. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want nothing to be misinterpreted in a text. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you you can't you can't tell tone in a text. Yeah. So I want to make sure you know exactly what my tone is. You know exactly how I feel. So that's why I give you a phone call. It's easier that way for me. For me, it's easier. Yeah, that way. yeah you you know we in the screenshot and record everything era. So you got to be careful with that, man. But I just, I, I just think we too grown. If you already got kids, you too grown to be going through that. If it was a situation to where y'all disagree, man, leave that behind closed doors. Don't go to Facebook and put out screenshots of what was said. I think it just calls uh, people egos and, and, and tempers to flare up even more. And that's when you get stupidity to happen. Man, everybody got a choice and decision in life. You know, if, if y'all don't kick it like that, you ain't got to talk no more. Y'all ain't got to be friends. I like, you know, folks like us, we grew up together. So, you know, you get you get strikes, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like you did you did something dirty. I was like, all right, this might just be some one-off thing or something like that. You know, we've been cool for whatever, for however long or whatever. So that's another thing. But like... You know, y'all just cool because y'all got pregnant at the same time. Y'all kids the same age. And y'all like, <laughs> uh, my kids should be friends or something like that. You know, if if y'all get in disagreement and y'all ain't cool no more, just y'all ain't cool no more. Don't don't kick it with each other no more. Uh, spread the spread the distance on how often y'all kick it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You, you ain't got to be like, all right, let's get in an argument and then it's no big old big old thing, you know what I mean? You ain't got to be like that. Oh, well. Oh, well, man. Uh, I hope it work out for her. For her, But, you know, a lot of times I just got to wonder, though, do, do you put this stuff on the internet just for clout? You know, just so you can monetize your page, man. You know, just so you can <laughs> page. A lot of and, variables man. going there, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, talking about monetizing your page and getting your page right, everybody where you are right now, make sure you go to our YouTube page. <laughs> make sure you hit the subscribe button. We need to get those subscribers up on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Uh, you know, make sure you like, subscribe. The people who are listening to the show, you know, when we put it out and we put it back out, make sure you if you got to leave a comment, man. Leave a comment, man. If you're checking us out. On Spotify, on Spotify, we usually have polls on every show. We got a poll on every show. So leave our feel on that poll, man. We need to make sure you all take care of it, man. Make, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We need to get these subscribers up. Get them up. So, but we're getting closer, man. We're getting close. 
we getting close to the 90s block, man. We're getting close to the 90s block, man. And I ain't really had nothing. But I don't know why I just said that. I should have skipped over it. <laughs> I, I, I should have skipped over it, but we're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it real. We talked about we talked about your favorite. We talked about your favorite uh arcade video game on the nineties block on the nineties block last week. But this week on the on the nineties block, we <laughs> want to talk about your favorite Nintendo game, man. I just watched um Super Mario Brothers. I watched Super Mario Brothers. Which Super Mario character? Because you know Mario had a couple of different suits. Which Super Super Mario character was your favorite Super Mario character? Was it when Mario had the star? Was it Flying Mario? Yeah, what was that? Mario, he was like in a squirrel suit or something. Whatever yeah, Mario could fly. Fox, Fox, he Fox suit. Him. Was it the swimming Mario, the one who could swim? Or was it Mario when he could shoot the fireballs? Which one was your favorite Mario? The fireball Mario, the frog Mario, or the fox Mario? Hey, you know, you know uh, the thing you said at first was none of the ones you just said just now. But, I thought I said the flying Mario. No, nah, you said the one with the star when he was like invincible and all that. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, it's all good. Hey, we we just gonna say which one. We ain't gonna we ain't gonna uh take it down to three of both choices. So which one? Which what you gotta be? I'm going with the just the original Mario. The little one of, wasn't even uh, a choice, the choice, mush- nigga. Oh, the mushroom. <laughs> the, the 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 when he was the little mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna go with the one where you had the, when he had the star slide. Since that ain't even a choice. The one when he had the star and could run through anything. Yeah, I like, I like the uh, I like the little fox. You know, can he float a little bit? He can spin around, knock people out. You know, grab people, put them over his head, throw them, and all that stuff. So I, I go with that one. You know what? I, I go with Fireball Mario. I like the one. You know, he can throw fire and knock because he could he could take out everybody. He could take out the turtles. He could take out everybody but the bullet. He couldn't take out the bullet. When you had to fire, yeah, you had to jump on top of them and knock that bullet down. But see, when you was invincible, that bullet ain't do nothing to you. Yeah, yeah. I, but I, 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 I Mario told Mario. everybody coordination. You had to you had to get had a good time and play Mario Bros. Oh, yeah, man. especially in that swimming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's why none of us picked that because that was the hardest one. I think. Yeah, buddy, you had to go to dip it up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah that, that was my boy, Mario Brothers. They said flying Mario could knock the fire out. But he could knock the fire out. Yeah, that's what she said. Uh, I ain't know that. somebody that didn't even grow up on on um Mario. She was she was a Super Nintendo uh, uh whatever whatever was after that. She was probably a savior. Oh, well. Oh, well. Well, check this, man. It has been another great episode of the RIP 28 podcast. Another great episode of the RIP 28 podcast. And Bruce, you all on the wrong. man. But this is a podcast where a few friends get together and we talk about a few things. Some of those things you might like. Some of those things you might not like. But we keep on talking about it. We got any pardon shots from the president? El Presidente, anything you need to say before we get out of here? No nah, man, I ain't got nothing, man. Just uh um next week, you know. Y'all come on, be ready for another show. You know, we all good. You know, school starting and all that stuff. Getting the kids ready. Got got Sly with his kid playing football this year, man. We all excited, you know. So it's all good. Just know, nephew, if you can't play, I'm just owning you. I don't care what your daddy say. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, we ain't gonna disown. Uh, we just gonna say nah, that, we this ain't no fine. We proud of you, big Cam. Just, just cook something when I come down there. <laughs> LBZ, you got anything to say, LBZ? 
Man, I was going to say it's, it's the beginning of this uh, high school football season in South Carolina, y'all. So go out to your local high schools, go back to your alma maters and, and support, man. It's not easy running these programs and trying to have these kids and up-to-date things and safety equipment and stuff. So whenever you get a chance, give back, man, not only to high school, but to the local uh, parks and rec um, parks and rec uh, teams, too. Uh, we have Chance as the head coach and offensive coordinator. We won't say what team. So they don't run him out of town. But um, give back, man. Go support. We appreciate y'all for all your support. Y'all have a great week, man. Be productive. Appreciate you, bro. All right, sure. man. <laughs> as we get ready to close this thing out, man, I want to take I want to take some words from an American, an American poet, an American poet as he has been said, one of the greatest poets of our time, Mr. Andre Benjamin, he says, better come <laughs> back down to Mars. Girl, quit chasing cars. What happens when the dough gets low? Bitch, you ain't that fine. No way, <laughs> no way, no way. It's the Real 28 Podcast. It's a podcast where you say a few things, some of those things you might like, some of those things you might not like, but we keep on talking about them on the RIP 28 podcast. We'll see you next week. We holla. Holla. Bye.